वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला डियर स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी वुड बी स्टडिंग द मॉड्यूल ऑन द सिटी एंड इट्स रीजन द लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव वुड बी द सिटी इन द कॉन्टेक्सट ऑफ इट्स रीजन द डेफिनेशन द स्केल द इंटर डिपेंडेंस बिटवीन द सिटी एंड इट्स रीजन एंड द लैंड यूटिलाइजेशन इन द रीजन सो द एज वी all know or as we have to understand that the city is dependent on it, on its region and the region is dependent on its city it is a two way process when we look at the city in the context of its region we find we let us look at the definitions now the the city is surrounded by its hinterland or the region which is defined as we see the oxford english dictionary as it as, as it has defined the region is an area especially part of a country or the world or it can be lower than that also uh, smaller than that also uh, smaller area so which has a definable characteristics but not always fixed boundaries and then uh, macneil has given another definition which is said which he has said that uh, a strategic region is a strategic and political level of administration and policy making extending beyond the administrative boundaries of single urban local government authorities to include urban and or semi urban hinterlands so it is basically beyond the ur urban local government by the urban local body that is beyond the city boundaries the area which and which extends beyond it and where where there is also uh, peri urban developments so those sort of that area is a region uh, and then uh, chris maida has said that it's an uh, region is an area having some characteristics that distinguish it from other areas it is a territory of interest to people and for which one or more distinctive traits are used as the basis for its identity it can be a specific for a specific purpose so it can be a region it can be an industrial region where industries are operating or it can be a mm, resource region eco resource region where environmental uh, resources are there or it's characterized by that or it can be an agro climatic region so there are various uh, definitions so now the term city region has been in use uh, since about 1950 by urbanists economists urban planners uh, to mean a metropolitan area and a hinterland uh, but not necessarily having a shared administration typically it denotes a city conurbation or urban zone with multiple administrative districts but sharing resources like labor market transport network so that it functions as a single unit now this figure uh, as you can see it is the national capital territory of delhi uh, it is surrounded by uh, various states part of various states that means various uh, few of the districts of these various states there is um, part of uttar pradesh part of haryana part of rajasthan and so delhi is the focal point that is which is the mega city there are other metropolitan cities which are um, surrounding the mega city then there are other cities which are smaller uh, than the metropolitan cities and then there are networks uh, major roads rivers and that's how this is the region of the national capital region uh, and then we also find that um, the definition uh, it's also defined as unido has given a definition which where it says that a city region is defined as a city and the surrounding suburbs that constitutes a coherent region as defined by the local authorities so city region is a geographic region that is known by the name of the city that that is its center of economic development as i said 
like Delhi was the focal point and city region is talking about city region is that geographic region that it's known by the name of the city so NCR or the national capital region is an example we can state for this definition then the city region is also defined as an area of interrelated activities uh, in interests common organizations brought about being through the medium of the roots which bind it to the urban centers that means it is that area beyond the city but it has links with the city it can be the special linkages that means roads rail corridors which is running through the city towards the outside of the region or uh, uh, sorry from the city to beyond the city or so these are the special uh, uh, or the physical links the networks and also we have the functional linkages that means the dependence on the, of the city on the region and the region on the city the commuters move from the region to the city people are coming to the city from the region for various purposes for work for education, for healthcare, and from the city also people are now moving out because many of the institutes, educational institutes, healthcare facilities are located in the region. So now people are also moving from the city to the region also. Now, what is the scale of this, uh, of the region? Now district is an administrative unit is many a times referred to as the region of the city. The region of a large city may be one district or maybe even smaller than a district in case of medium and small towns. So region of a large city also can be more than one district and small and medium towns would be less than a district. Now region becomes larger when the city size in the size of the city increases. As you can see uh, that um, the national capital um, territory uh, or the national capital region is about 50,000 square kilometers vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Kolkata which is about 2,000 square kilometers. So it's not now we mean Yes, definitely the region increases, the region becomes larger as the size of the city increases, but um, with the same, uh, there may be instances where the population uh, is the same, but the region uh, of a city is uh, more or is varying. Now this can be due to various reasons, due to the, maybe the activities, the potential, the links, so various reasons can be there for this variation. Now the in, coming to the interdependence and linkages. How is the city dependent or the region dependent on the city or the city dependent on the region? We come to Lewis Mumford's book, The Culture of Cities. Now Lewis Mumford was an American uh, academician of repute and uh, he specialized or had interest in uh, history, sociology, then he was a literary critic and uh, from 1895 to 1990 was a span uh, of his life and uh, uh, he has written in his book, The Culture of Cities, uh, and he has stated that to define human areas, one must seek not the periphery alone, but the center. And for the center tends to focus the flow of energies, men and goods that passes through a region, concentrating them, dispersing them, diverting them, rerouting them. In short, exerting a close and controlling influence over the development of region as a dynamic reality. Like we say, city is a dynamic entity, it's always growing. 
Similarly, the region, it is also a dynamic entity because it is called always growing and interacting with the, not only with the main city, but also with the other cities, other or other cities or towns or the villages or the rural settlements. <coughs> when we look at the, inter as I was discussing about the interdependence, that there is one is which is the spatial uh, linkages and there is functional linkages. So now let us look at um, the dependence. Uh, we find that the cities, so it's a two-way process as I had said. So city and its region are mutually interdependent. I mean, and they are mutually li uh, interlinked and uh, cities depend on the region for what? Cities depend on the region for food, for various products, for raw materials, uh, then uh, for labor, uh, that people come to work to the city from the region. And uh, the region depends on the city for various services, for facilities, for employment opportunities, so this is the um, interdependence, mutual interdependence, which we uh, see in the city. Now, when we look at, if you see this figure, uh, this is a conceptual figure of the types of uh, linkages which is uh, which takes place in the within the within a region. Now, what are the components of a region? We see that there is a large city. Then there is a there is this peri-urban development which is beyond the large city. Then there is there are um, towns, uh, there are um, small cities. Then there are um, as you can see in the legend, um, the, the the central or the focal point is a large city. The um, there are then there are small cities. Then there are towns. Then there is peri-urban development along the mainly the roads and then there are rural settlements now what how many types of linkages can be there you can see so it is like a web the linkages form like a web for example there is a link between the large city and the small city then there is a um, link linkage between the large city and the villages that is the rural settlements People are coming from there also, from villages also, from cities also. Then there is also link between the towns, not necessary to the large city, but they are, there is a linkages between the towns of the region. Then there is also linkages between the small cities within the region. Then there is a link between or the villages of the region. And uh, then there is um, the linkages between the towns and the villages and between the small city and the villages or the rural settlements and then between the towns and the uh, small cities. So there are various linkages which are happening uh, uh, within the region and uh, the region is constantly uh, inter or region we will say that it's a di also a dynamic entity like we talk of a city and uh, there are these interactions which are taking place constantly within the region. Now uh, as I said earlier the linkages can be both physical uh, that means in terms of transportation network there can be roads, rails, airports um, then um, so those are the transportation network which connect the city to its region. It can be communication lines which are telephone, internet, there can be trans transmission lines that is the gas supply lines or the oil supply. So there are linkages which are physical linkages and also there are linkages which are functional linkages. That means the city is dependent on the surrounding areas for the various requirements as I said earlier. So the functional linkages uh, is other ones that is um, socio-cultural linkages, then economic linkages and then political and administrative linkages. So in socio-cultural we have that is for education and health facilities then or entertainment and, rec or, and entertainment and recreation facilities. 
then in economic linkages we find that uh, there are these the regions are the um, sources of raw materials maybe and then um, there are industries then there are markets for finished goods then some offices are sometimes there in the region so there is also and therefore the city uh, the offices uh, are there in the city also and from the region people come to the offices in the city the re, um, offices can is also there are also there in the region and people commute from the city to the region so uh, these are linkages uh, these are these functional linkages then there are political and administrative uh, uh, as a part of this functional linkages also as we can see that as i have uh, said earlier that there is this uh, the city is dependent maybe the food is coming uh, from the the milk the food um, uh, i mean food which will include the perishable as well as the non perishable items uh, so that is coming from the region so those are the for various functions the functional linkages are those that means for various functions the city is dependent or is linked with the region and vice versa uh, we come down to the now the components of the region what does region consist of now we see that a region consists of it it has various uses and we uh, the uses in the region is termed or the the lands which are put to various uses is termed as land utilization of the region and the land utilization of the region we find that there are uh, various cities that is the urban settlements different size classes of cities and towns are there which which are which was shown in that concept drawing then there was various rural settlements that is different size classes of villages uh, or rural settlements then um, including the built up area we have the there's residential areas there's non residential areas so uh, the all the the entire urban settlements are not built up so the built up area is also a part of the uh, settlements so we have um, which includes the residential or where people live and the non residential areas then we have the regional networks and terminals uh, which is the roads rail air and water based if there are any depending upon some cities which have water based transportation also so there is regional networks and terminals then there are nat nature reserves which is uh, uh, or the natural reserves or natural resource areas which is the which are the water bodies the forests the environmentally sensitive areas so they are also they are part of the uh, natural resources then there is land for production and economic activities for example the farmlands the agriculture the crop production areas then there are industrial areas for industrial activities maybe the industrial estates then we have the fallow lands which is unproductive land then we have the waste land which is the oh, maybe saline land gullied land waterlogged land barren areas so those are the fallow lands which are um, we have another category which is uh, which is the culturable fallow which that means fallow land but still which can be taken up for production but uh, the uh, there's another category which is the fallow land which is which cannot be used for production so that is that category which is comes under unproductive land mm. now we come to the mm, cities or the urban settlements urban and rural settlements and now as i said earlier that there are different size classes of um, cities and towns so we see that the urban settlements uh, or we let us start with the rural settlements first we see that there are hamlets which is less than 100 if you can see in the drawing the these are the settlement locations uh, the concentration of settlements i mean some parts of the region may have more settlements some part of the region may have less settlements the concentration of settlements then we have small villages which are ranging from 100 to 199 200 to 499 500 to 999 then we have medium villages 
thousand to one triple nine, then two thousand to nearly three thousand, then large villages or census towns, ten thousand and above. So um, uh, this is about the rural settlements. Now we come to the uh, urban set settlements, that means the cities and towns. We have small towns, as we know, these are all census classification small towns which are below 5,000, 5,000 to 10,000, 10,000 to 20,000, then medium towns which are class 2 and 3 towns, 20,000 to 50,000, then 50,000 to 1 lakh, large cities, class, class 1 cities which are 1 lakh to 10 lakhs, then we have the metropolitan cities which are more than 10 lakhs to about 50 lakhs and then 50 lakhs to 100 lakhs, and then we have the mega city which is 100 lakhs and above and if, if you, as you can see this drawing it is about it is the national capital region um, of Delhi and um, where we are showing uh, the uh, settlement locations. Now we come to the regional networks and terminals. Now um, as you can see there are these expressways which are uh, coming uh, the various expressways which uh, cross the region and where the from the main city that is the um, mega city of delhi so we have the road network the railway network and then we have the airports uh, so this is the um, about the networks and terminals and uh, then we have the built up area which is the residential non residential areas and uh, um, the, or you can see the concentration of built up areas. Now we have the natural resource areas which are the which is the ridge you can see the ridge the or the water bodies the forests environmentally sensitive areas uh, so these are the or mainly the hill areas the forest areas water bodies. Now we come to the agriculture as I said land for production and economic activities the crop lands and land for industrial activities. So um, we see that in near Bhivadi, that is one of the areas, the industrial activities are there and uh, that is an industrial estate. So like that there are areas, not only crop land, but uh, industrial activity areas are also part of uh, the land which is used for in the region. Then we have the fallow land, which is, uh, as I said earlier, the fallow land, unproductive lands, wastelands. Uh, so this is as far as the um, uh, uh, land utilization is concerned and uh, um, when we see that uh, um, the land utilization classification it has been given land utilization classification has been given by URDPFI in their guidelines which is URDPFI is the urban and region development plan formulation and uh, implementation guidelines of 2014 we see that uh, there is there are urbanizable zones then uh, new area zones potential for urban development zones then um, industrial zones uh, and uh, we also see that uh, there is also survey of india if you see the survey of india maps um, in the survey of india maps uh, of the region there is this categorization of what I have discussed, that is, uh, where are the hills, where are the um, forests, where are the water bodies, where are the rivers, where are the where are the that means the water channels, where are the roads. So all this is also given in the survey of India maps, and EODPFI guidelines um, uh, has given certain uh, other uh, categorization, as uh, which I have discussed earlier. That is transport. Trans relating to transport and communications, the roads, the railways, airports, seaports, dockyards, bus depots, transmission and communication lines, uh, all that. And then it is also, and if, as you can see in these drawings, in these uh, slides, the um, symbols and the color schemes are all given. Each uh, use represents uh, a color or a, and it is given in uh, this uh, in these slides. So, um, and the next your DVFI use zones we see. So, we um, see that the next uh, use zones like agriculture areas, 
then uh, or the crop lands then uh, poultry and dairy farming there are brick kilns maybe then there are mining areas so those are these which are the primary sector or what we call as primary sector activities so that we have sometimes we have the stone quarries so these are the zones which have been which uh, um, uh, i had um, discussed so urdpfa has given symbols so in a map we uh, denote the land utilization through these symbols that means denote all those areas all those components uh, or the lands which have been put to various uses are denoted by various symbols and colors and that is given in this these slides the next category as i uh, said is apart uh, apart from agriculture is the open area zones that means recreation area if there is any green buffer then protective zones eco sensitive zones maybe the flood plains of the rivers or uh, the wetlands if there are any wetlands so earmarked identified wetlands so those are all eco sensitive zones then if there are any special recreation zone then um, reserve forest sanctuaries so all that that is earmarked through various notations and uh, um, so then next we come to the apart from all these settlements uh, open areas uh, all that we have also the special area zones there may be zones which are which are uh, heritage and conservation areas there may be scenic value areas there can be an ecotourism zone so these are all special areas there can be defense there can be can cantonment areas for then government restricted area or the defense for defense purposes then uh, there are uh, so therefore these are the also area, the components or the areas uh, for which the land is used in the region so dear students uh, today we have learned the uh, how we have uh, defined the region and uh, what is the scale of the region the interdependence and linkages between the city and the region and um, what are the uh, what is and about the land utilization in the region thank you